Princess Diana, the most envied woman on earth? Not anymore. She's been treated with the drug called Prozac. A royal watcher exposes a princess in private, an eye-to-eye -eye exclusive, and... I don't want to see nobody else get hurt. How could a child's toy paralyze a grown man? Find out why Bill Evans had to fight to warn you. Eye-to-eye, -eye, Thursday. Today's Wish TV, your 24-hour news service with continuing coverage of Election 94. Sponsored by Marsh. And once again, good evening. I'm Mike Ahern. And I'm Debbie Knox. We're back with our continuing coverage of Election 94. And let's get right to the latest uh, re results that we have so far on this uh, first the congressional race, the second district. 39% of the vote is in now, and David McIntosh continues to lead Joseph Hogsett by about 4,000 votes. Now, the lead is stretching there a little bit. A little bit for McIntosh. He's picked up a bit. Let's go up to the fourth district now. Jill Long has conceded this particular race, the incumbent Democrat losing to Mark Souter, 57% of the vote. Souter is the new congr uh, congressman for that area. In the 7th District, John Myers figured to have a pretty uh, difficult time against Mike Harmless early on, but he's opened up his lead tonight. 69% of that vote is in. Myers has a pretty comfortable lead, and if the Republicans were to win control of the House of Representatives nationally, Myers would be would probably head the Appropriations Committee. That is a, uh, a powerful post, yes. Let's go on to the 8th District now. John Hostetler uh, ahead of Frank McCloskey. Again, we don't know how this is all going to play out because of the Evansville vote, but 32% of the vote counted right now, and Hostetler, a uh, pro-life candidate, beating Frank McCloskey right now, the incumbent. And these returns are very early still, 37% in, but look at this. Gene Lising, the Republican, 25, well, this is, this is a dead heat. They both have 50% of the vote. Lee Hamilton, the Democrat incumbent, 30 years in Congress. Hamilton has always won that district very easily, and this is very... Boy, that would be an upset uh, of national proportions yeah. there. In the 10th, it's Andy Jacobs, the declared winner. He's going to uh, be the congressman for another term, beating Marvin Scott. At first, it looked like Scott might pull it out, but Andy Jacobs in for another congressional term. And appeared a lot of the Democrat uh, voters in the inner city stayed home on that one, and there right. is the vote total. And let's go back to the second once again now. 44% of the vote is in now, so these are updated numbers. McIntosh continues to hold on to a 5,000 vote lead over Joel Hogsett with just under half the vote counted in the 2nd District. Let's check in with Anne-Marie Tiernan now who is at the McIntosh headquarters and find out the very latest there. Good evening, Mike and Debbie. A lot of the people that uh, you see here in the audience just were listening to your broadcast, and that is the first time that they heard uh, the 44% turnout. Uh, Ruthie, you've been out campaigning with your husband. Uh, tell us, do you believe that it's the party that really has come through? Certainly. We've been campaigning on the whole county ticket. It's really going to be a sweep for the whole Republicans. I think we're really sending a message to America that um, the Midwest is saying no to the Bill Clinton agenda and yes to Indiana. So certainly a lot of happy people here oh, tonight and much, much great too crowd. soon to call. Oh, also. truly, truly. I'm, we're not we're not conceding anything right now, but we're just thrilled with the lead we have now. And we're just going to look forward to a short, quick night, with, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> oh, hopefully. Okay. Thank you very much. That's Ruthie McIntyre. <laughs> now, now let's go to Rushville, and Eric Halverson is standing by with Joe Hogsett. We've just heard a rendition of Happy Days Are Here Again, probably a little too early as far as uh, this vote counting is concerned, but they're saying that they've seen some trends from vote counts around the district, and they're saying that it's not a good sign at this point, but it's still a point where they're talking about two-thirds of the vote still being out, and two of the biggest counties still have their vote tallies to come in. So the trend isn't good, but they're saying they're trying to remain optimistic. Mike and Debbie? Okay, okay. still might be a long night in the second district. Eric, thank you. Eric Holberson in Rushville. Let's take a look now at the Marion County Prosecutor's Race. This is the one that we've been watching all night as well. Uh, Scott Newman still in the lead over Jeff Modisette, and Jeff Modisette had raised over $600,000 to uh, keep his seat, but it may not be paying off right now anyway. A lot of television advertising, and that one got mm -hmm. a little rough at times, too. Scott Newman with the lead there. However, uh, although Newman earlier you saw here on Channel 8 was making what appeared to be a victory speech, he wouldn't call it that. But, but he... we got a call from uh, the Modisette camp yes. and said that they are not conceding at this point. Let's find out more about that. Let's go to Ken Owen now at Democratic uh, Election Headquarters and uh, Tina Cosby. Uh, they're not uh, not conceding this one there, Ken. Is that right? Uh, that's right, Mike and Debbie. From what we understand, that was a false report. There is no concession at this point. What sounded like an acceptance speech probably shouldn't have been. Modisette's campaign manager says that 91 precincts are still out, 17 in Center Township. They're very hopeful still that before the night is out, Jeff Modisette can turn it around and actually win the race, of course. We'll keep our eye on that one, Mike and Debbie. All right, Ken. Very good. Thank you. Ken Owen and Tina Cosby. 
So that is what we have right now. Again, the in the second district race, it's uh, McIntosh leading Hogsett, uh, but there has been an upset in the fourth district right. race. Uh, it's Jill Long out, but the tenth district race, which has been an interesting one all night long, Andy Jacobs apparently retaining his seat in Congress. Looks that way. The ninth district, <laughs> uh, the most surprising race of the evening. Mm -hmm. we, we thought we had a surprise in the fourth and a tight race in the second, but that's dead heat there between Lising and Hamilton. Stay tuned. We'll stay with it. CBS News election night coverage continues. From CBS News election headquarters, here again is Dan Rather. 9.30 in the Eastern Time Zone, the Republicans get another. Our CBS News estimate is that Representative John Kyle has won the Arizona Senate seat. This is for the Democrat Dennis DeConcini's retiring this is for his seat, another pickup, a turnover for the Republicans. They now have a net pickup of seven. If they can hold that net pickup of seven, they need seven to control the Senate. They now are plus seven with this win in Arizona. If they can hold that, they will control the next Senate. It is now absolutely critical that the Democrats win the Senate race in Pennsylvania, where it's uh, back and forth. They have to nearly have to win Minnesota and Washington. Uh, it was always a, a big rock up a high hill. The rock just got bigger and the hill just got a lot higher. Let me show you why as we look over the Senate races as we have them thus far. These are the Senate winners thus far. Kyle has picked up a seat for the Republicans in Arizona, as we just reported to you. No surprise, Lieberman has held on to a Democratic seat in Connecticut. Also no surprise, Roth has held on to his seat in Delaware, although there was a time the Democrats thought they could unseat him, isn't going to happen. Mack, an easy and expected Republican winner in Florida, hold on for the GOP there. Same story, second verse with Lugar in Indiana. He was expected to hold on to it for the Republicans, did so. But here is, mark it, a turnover. Snow, the Republican wins in Maine. This is another pickup for the GOP. Remember George Mitchell, who was the Senate Majority Leader, retired. He thought he'd be able to turn it over to Democrat. Isn't going to happen. Sarbanes, the veteran Democrat in Maryland, will be returned to office. A hold on for the Democrats there. Ted Kennedy in Massachusetts, as Linda Douglas reported a while back. Kennedy is the winner in Massachusetts. He will hold on to the seat there. Abraham in Michigan. This is a pickup uh, for the Republicans in Michigan and a very big one indeed because President Clinton thought he might be able to turn that race ar around. He couldn't. Abraham wins it and it's a pickup. Trent Lott in Mississippi holds on to the seat there down along the Delta for the Republicans. Ashcroft in Missouri. This is a hold on for the Republicans but a new senator. Danforth, the Republican retiring there, but Ashcroft will hold the seat for the GOP. Lautenberg in New Jersey had a, uh, his version of the Tong Wars out there in New Jersey, but Lautenberg finally won it, holds on to the seat for the Democrats. Rolling on with Senate winners now. Bingaman, New Mexico. Very tough race out there in the New Mexico country, but Bingaman, the Democrat, holds on to his seat. Moynihan, easy winner in New York State, a hold on for the Democrats. In Ohio, a pickup for the Republicans. DeWine gets the seat that did belong to the Democrat Metzenbaum. That's a, a gain for the Republicans. One of their seven gained thus far. Inhofe in Oklahoma. Boren, the Democrat, retired there. McCurdy, a, a Democrat, thought he could get the seat. Isn't going to happen. Inhofe is the winner in Oklahoma. A pickup for the Republicans. And look at this. The twin killing in Tennessee. Frist, the surgeon, has ousted uh, Sasser. Sasser, who might have been, probably would have been, the Senate Majority Leader for the Democrats, he's out of here, gone. Frist is the winner. Now, Thompson, another Republican, also wins in Tennessee, his margin even bigger. This is for the seat that was open, formerly a Democratic seat belonging to Al Gore. So two Democratic seats are gone in Tennessee, two new Republicans coming in from the volunteer state. Kay Bailey Hutchinson, a possible uh, a peery on somebody's future national ticket, uh, a woman senator in Texas has uh, won re-election there. Jefferson in Vermont, GOP seat there. Rob in Virginia, this will surprise a lot of people given that Oliver North ran a tough, smart, all-out campaign, but it wasn't enough in the end. Rob's uh, ship came in, but it simply docked at the, uh, his ship came in, period. And uh, he won for the Democrats. Byrd in West Virginia. Uh, wins as expected, holds on to the Democrats. Same with Cole in Wisconsin, he gets a second term. Uh, Thomas in Wyoming, uh, this is for Malcolm Wallop's retiring seat, so it's the uh, Republican hold on, although there'll be a new senator there. Uh, we're running down these for you because we want to give you an idea of where it is tonight. As of this moment, the Republicans would control the next United States Senate, because remember, they need a net gain of seven. Now. They needed a net gain of seven, and so far tonight, they have a net gain of seven. We repeat and underscore for emphasis, italicize this, 
it's pretty hard to see how the Democrats can hold control of the Senate. In fact, I can't see it unless they win in Pennsylvania, unless they win in Minnesota, unless they win in Washington state.